Peter Schiff is warning the housing market and debt crisis is collapsing. And in the event that you're not familiar with Dr. Doom, as CNBC used to call him, Peter Schiff is a chief economic and global strategist. And he accurately predicted and traded around the great financial crisis. And he's getting a lot of attention. He's getting a lot of press. He seems to be everywhere these days, just like he was during the last crash. Because he's sounding the alarm bells of what he sees, which totally aligns with what I've been sharing to anybody who will listen for a long time. And when he isn't out there warning everybody about what he sees coming, he is a fund manager. And right now he loves gold as an investment. And he thinks Bitcoin is a total Ponzi scheme. And while Schiff thinks that the market and the economy and the country is collapsing, Jeff Bezos' mega yacht is so freaking big, it's too big to fit in Port Everglades. They can't find a spot to anchor it. And if you've been watching my content recently, you know that I'm talking about the massive uptick in supply and the massive drop in home values that we've seen month over month, this month versus last. And yet billionaires continue to flock to Palm Beach and many big corporations continue to flock to Florida. Meanwhile, inflation's out of control. The Florida home insurance market's a disaster. And Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom went at it last night. Florida versus California. Ba, 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 mano y mano. And the debate was a masterclass in chaos and incivility. And as a Florida resident, I'm pleased to say that Ron DeSantis may have got his ass kicked by the Senate and their inquiry into what's happening with citizens insurance. But he put a world-class beat down on Gavin Newsom. And I read your comments. I know that you know. I'm not an analyst. I'm not an economist. And although I was a stockbroker for 20 years, and I do have some market experience, I'm definitely no Peter Schiff. According to you, I'm just some D-bag realtors who makes YouTube videos and a real estate agent. But I'm not the devil. I'm not evil. And I'm never moving to California, Washington, or New York. I'm just a damn Yankee who's lived in Florida for over 40 years and made the decision to max out South Florida living and raise my family here too. Because it's obviously the worst place you'd ever want to live. But I'm committed to you, the loyal viewer, and I'm committed to sharing the truth no matter what the market conditions are. And if you want to know what that is, please check out my free Patreon channel. The link is down below. But I love you all, except the haters. And my message to you is going to be eloquently said by my good friend, Elon Musk. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. That's how I feel. And since I'm just some guy on YouTube who happens to sell real estate, I'm not going to pretend to be the expert. I'm going to let Peter tell you exactly what he thinks about the housing bubble right now. I, you know, I think real estate in particular, uh, you know, is a you know, massive bubble um, because it's been subsidized by a number of factors, one being ar artificially low interest rates. So as the Fed suppressed interest rates, uh, kept rates at zero, uh, and in fact, not only was it buying government bonds, but it was buying mortgage-backed securities. It kept the cost of financing homes artificially low. People can go out and borrow money to buy a house and pay, you know, 3%, 4%. And that enabled borrowers to pay much higher prices for the homes because most Americans, when they buy a home, it's not what it costs. It's what are my payments? And they simply look at the monthly payments and whether or not they, they can swing them. And with interest rates artificially suppressed, that made it possible for people to pay much higher prices. Now, that doesn't necessarily benefit the buyer. That benefits the seller. The seller got to get the higher price. The buyer is stuck paying it. But the other thing that the government has been doing for a long time to um, you know, prop up real estate prices is by guaranteeing mortgages. So when you have Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, they go to a lender and they say, hey, we guarantee this mortgage. So if this guy doesn't pay, the U.S. government will pay. That makes the borrower a better credit risk. 
and that qualifies him for a lower uh, interest rate. And in fact, you know, once you've got the government guarantee, I mean, that's pretty much all you need, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's like a, a bond. And, and so that also allows people to buy houses with lower down payments or maybe no down payments uh, with higher uh, debt levels or where the mortgage payment is a higher percentage of their income because it doesn't matter if the guy defaults, if it's a guaranteed. So that means that people get better terms. Home buyers get to get qualify for a larger loan than would otherwise be the case in a free market. So because of all these government subsidies, real estate is much more expensive than it otherwise would be. So, and again, that doesn't benefit the buyer of the real estate. People think, oh, you know, we need the government because it's making housing more affordable. It's actually making it more expensive. It's making the monthly payments lower, but the actual cost of the home is higher. And so, yeah, you get a government guaranteed loan, but now you're having to borrow a lot more money. And so you have a much bigger mortgage. If the government was completely out of the housing market, prices would be lower. And so real estate would be more affordable. You'd have to pay a higher interest rate, but you wouldn't have to pay as much to buy the house. So you wouldn't have to borrow as much money. Now, it's been clear to me for a very long time that the banking system and the financial system is at risk and the liquidity crisis is coming soon. But don't take my word for it because I don't have the credentials. Let's see what Peter Schiff has to say because he does. But the problem is the prices are not. So, you know, you can look and say, oh, you know, we had mortgage rates of more than 8% in the 1990s and you know you go back into the 1980s you know they were more than 10 percent yes that's true but housing prices were a lot lower uh and so you didn't have to borrow as much money uh at that that 10 percent and other costs were lower you know insurance uh, uh you know taxes maintenance things that homeowners would have to deal with those costs were lower and you know Americans, by and large, had more savings at that time, so they could actually make a larger down payment, and so they didn't have to borrow as much of the price. So that because the, the the mortgage money only affected what you borrowed. So if you put twenty, thirty percent down, right, you you only had to pay ten percent on the eighty percent. But people today, they got no money to put down. Maybe they're putting three or four percent. So they're borrowing 96, 97 percent, and now they got to pay eight percent on that. Uh, so it, it it makes the rate more uh, expensive. But the key, the, the bigger factor is the price of the house itself. You know, home prices have gone up dramatically. In fact, look at how much higher real estate prices are now than they were three, four, five years ago when rate you could get a three percent mortgage. Now it's 8% and manipulating the market. I mean, number one, they held interest rates down at zero. So long-term treasuries were, were, were low. And so the mortgage rate is kind of a function of that because of the, the government guarantee. But even the, you know, the jumbo loans that the government wasn't backing, in a low interest rate environment, there were still buyers for those loans because people were stretching for yield. And so they were you know, willing to take a little extra risk especially if it was collateralized by, by, by real estate. But that distorted the whole market. I mean, the, we did the same thing leading up to the 2008 financial crisis when the Fed brought interest rates down to 1%. It wasn't zero and they didn't stay there as long, but the private sector was able to create these products based on the low interest rates where they you know, bundled these mortgages and basically you know, created this subprime market and enabled you know, people with low credit scores or low down payments to buy homes that they previously might not have qualified for. And that helped fuel a lot of demand. And there are a lot of people buying two homes, three homes, uh, and all this was you know, pushed up the price and we had this huge bubble. Then you had people taking out home equity loans. Uh, people were extracting the, the gains from their real estate and they're spending it or using it to buy more property or just to you know, buy a new car, or take a vacation. So we had an entire bubble economy based on the inflated value of, of real estate. And then you know, I knew back then that it was gonna end badly when the teaser rates reset and uh, people couldn't make the payments. But this I think is a much bigger problem 
that we have now in, 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 in the real estate market, particularly for the lenders, because in 2007, 2008, when the bubble popped, the banks lost money on the defaults. Homeowners weren't paying their mortgages because the homes were worth less than their mortgage and maybe their teaser rate expired and they didn't wanna pay the higher uh, price. And so the banks were in trouble because when people were defaulting, they were getting back the collateral and the collateral, collateral had lost value. Right? But the vast majority of borrowers did not default. So most of the mortgages were okay. And that still created you know, this banking crisis and a lot more banks would have failed and they should have failed had they not been bailed out. But today it's a different story. The banks are losing money on all the mortgages, even the mortgages where the borrowers are current. In fact, a lot right now, the banks would be better off if more people defaulted <laughs> because then they could sell the properties and get out from under these mortgages. Because for years, as Americans were refinancing their mortgages over and over again, and then locked in these rock bottom rates, right? You got some people actually have 30 year mortgages in the high tooth, right? Right after COVID, they went below three. And everybody thought this is great. You know, homeowners are really, you know, improving their balance sheets. They're locking in these, you know, 30 year mortgages at these rock bottom rates. And what I always pointed out, and nobody seemed to care about it, was sure, it's great for the borrower, but what about the lender? What about the banks who are stuck with these low mortgages? Because eventually the Fed's not gonna have interest rates at zero anymore. What happens when they go up? Well, now you have rates at 5%, but the banks are only collecting 3%, 4%. They're losing money on every mortgage they have on their books. And the bigger problem is their depositors are withdrawing their money because the banks can't compete with the government, which is paying over 5% on a money market. The banks can't give you that kind of rate because they don't have the money anymore. They loaned it out for 3%. So now depositors are coming to their banks and withdrawing their money. The banks don't have it because it's tied up in these long-term mortgages or treasuries. And they're all basically insolvent. And a lot of these banks are going to the Federal Reserve and they're taking their underwater collateral and they're giving it to the Fed and the Fed is giving them 100 cents on the dollar, you know, even though it's only worth 60 cents on the dollar. Uh, so I think the whole financial system is insolvent. I think all the banks that were too big to fail that we bailed out are now even bigger and they're gonna fail, but it's gonna be even worse for the economy because we made them so much bigger because we bailed them out the last time. Peter Schiff warns, the housing market and debt crisis is collapsing because it is. So be prepared. And if there's ever anything I can do to help you, please reach out because who you hire matters.